Hello everyone, I am Kushant Reddy. Welcome to my presentation on GSM. In today's world, everyone uses mobile phones to communicate with each other and each call gets connected within seconds. Now, we will get to know about the process behind each and every call. Okay then, not wasting any time. Let's get into the presentation. Now, GSM. Full form of GSM is Global System for Mobile Communication. Now, let's get into the, some basics. What is wireless? The word wireless in the dictionary is defined as having no wires. Yeah, just having no wires. But in networking terminology, wireless is a term used to describe any computer network where there is no physical wire connection between sender and receiver but it uses radio or microwaves to maintain communication it utilizes specific equipment such as NICs and router in place of wires initially it is 1G 1G is a first generation cellular standard called by different names like AMPS, MTS, IMTS it employs analog modulation technique with FTMA but 1G handsets were bulkier with antenna on top like this one. Moving forward, the cons of 1G are replaced by GSM Global System for Mobile Communication. GSM is a second generation cellular standard and is developed in the year 1991 by European Telecommunication to support voice and data services. It uses digital modulation with TDMA. While 2G handsets were cheaper and lesser in size, GSM was the first generation to introduce SIM cards. Let's see some key differences between first generation and second generation, where 1G is analog in nature, which provides only speech but not data services, whereas in 2G, each is a digital in nature which can provide both speech as well as data services. In 1G, international roaming is not possible, whereas 2G is globalized, which means international roaming is possible. Moving forward, GSM has certain specifications like uplink, downlink, transfer rate, etc. to carry certain information. Mainly, it has GMSK digital modulation and TDMA access method. GSM data speeds was approximately 14.4 kilobytes per second. GSM uses different bands in different regions. Here in India, GSM operates in 900 megahertz and 1800 megahertz bands. GSM architecture is basic architecture in cellular network. It contains four subsystems, mobile station, base station subsystem, network switching subsystem, operation support subsystem. Here, it is the representation of each subsystem in the architecture. It is noticed that each subsystem contains some components. Let's discuss it in detail one by one. First of all, it is mobile station. It has two components, mobile equipment. It is a hardware used by the subscriber to access network identified by IMEA number. International Mobile Equipment Identity SIM Subscriber Identity Module It is a detachable smart card containing IMSI International Mobile Subscriber Identity Number. It allows user to send and receive calls. Second subsystem is base station subsystem. It also contains two components base trans receiver system. It is nothing but mobile towers. It sends and receives signals from mobile phones and performs various functions like encoding, multiplexing, modulation and encryption. Then base station controller. It controls group of BTS. It allocates radio channels and hand over one of BTS 
to other. Now the third subsystem is network switching subsystem and it contains five components. The main element is mobile switching center. It manages mobile services like registration, authentication and performs call routing, call setup and call switching. And it is the heart of GSM network. It communicates with other NSS components like HLR, VLR, etc. The second element is home location register. It is a central master database of subscribers, IMSI, current location information. The third one is visitor location register. It is a sub subset of HLR and holds local database of users currently visiting location in other domain. Now uh, let's explain with example. If the user lives in Chennai, then it is his home network and HLR works here. Where he travels to Delhi, then it is his visiting network where VLR starts working. The fourth one is equipment identity register. It is also a database that contains all valid handsets on network using IMEI number. It marks IMEI as invalid if the handset is stolen. The fifth element is authentication center. A protected database that has copy of IMSA number for authentication and encryption task. It protects from a different types of frauds on the network. And the last subsystem is operation support subsystem. It is connected to all equipments in the switching system of GSM network. It provides administration and commercial operations and manages security and operations. Performs network configuration and maintenance tasks. Now let's see some advantages and disadvantages of GSM. Advantages of GSM Better quality of switch Data transmission is supported International roaming is possible CRISPR cleaner quieter calls Disadvantages of GSM are Frequent dropout and missile calls Less efficiency and security issues The GSM system can be simplified as shown The user calls a certain number using mobiles the signal is received by the mobile tower which is BTS then it is routed to BSC for allocating the radio channel and then it reaches to MSC for tracking location and authentication finally the signal is transmitted to telephone network at the receiver end the signal transmission occurs in just reverse direction now let's conclude the mobile telephone industry is rapidly growing and that has become a backbone for business success and its efficiency now it is a part of modern lifestyles all over the world the gsm is a standard that ensures the interoperability without stifling competition and innovation among the suppliers to benefit the public both in terms of cost and service quality gsm has ability to roam worldwide and has roaming agreements in place with the foreign operators globally so users can use their same sim in other cities or countries now in this presentation i gave an overview of gsm systems and its architecture i hope that i gave the general flavor of gsm and the philosophy behind its design Thank you.